Today I'll be taking a look at the GT610, a card I'm going to be overclocking far past its limit. This card was basically a display adapter and was never intended for gaming, but spoiler alert, I was able to get a fair few to run. So, stick around to figure out how I did it and why you shouldn't. To set the stage, this card came out back in 2012 as part of the G4600 series where Nvidia debuted their brand new Kepler architecture. Unfortunately, R610 doesn't even have that. Its processor, the GF119, was based on the even older Fermi 2.0 architecture, and in fact, the whole card was actually just the GT520 with the fancy new name. Both cards had the same render configuration, clock speeds, and memory availability, shipping in half gig, full gig and 2 gigabyte variants. And because I spare no expense, we have one of the worst models with only 1 gigabyte of VRAM. But don't worry, this isn't actually the worst card from the 600 series. That spot is reserved for the 605. Because I didn't buy this card new, I don't know what kind of environment it was previously used in. So before we get into any testing, I'm gonna take it apart, clean it out, and replace the paste to ensure ideal performance. Now I know what you're thinking, this card sounds pretty crappy, and it is, but ours has an advantage up its sleeve. R610, uncreatively dubbed the Zotac GT610 PCI X1, comes stock with elevated memory clock speeds. Instead of running at 500MHz like similar cards, ours actually was set to 660 but don't worry, I plan on blowing right past these stock speeds and putting this heatsink to the test. Additionally, another good part about this card is that it does have basic support for DirectX 12. This means that we can start just about any game on this card, including Cyberpunk 2077. Now, I'm not going to be running that game because it's not supported on Windows 7, but speaking of which, the test system we'll be using today has an i3-4130, 16GB of RAM, and Windows 7 running on an SSD. Installation for the GT610 is pretty easy, you just kind of stick it in. And just like that, our computer is ready to go. So let's see what the 610 can do. Oh, uh, I love Nvidia Inspector. It essentially just allows you to set the clock speeds at whatever you want, which means you can push the cards as far as possible and can abuse them until they die. Through my preliminary testing, the farthest I was able to push the GT610 before it artifacts and or crashes and just restarts the entire computer was an overclock of 1010 megahertz on the GPU, an overclock of 1167 on the memory, and a shader clock of 2020 megahertz. That's backed up by GPU-Z over here where you can see all the statistics, so let's see how CSGO runs. And here we are, uh, we're currently playing CSGO in 720p with all the lowest settings. We're only getting 41, 43 something FPS, but that's not that bad of a frame rate. What makes it bad is that it's very inconsistent, like now we're down to 26 and 18 during a firefight. It's like the game is on the borderline of being playable, it's almost enough for me to say it is. If you're playing CSGO with this card, you can legitimately blame your poor aiming skills just on the performance alone. Anyway, on to the next game. So the next game I decided to play was Valorant, and luckily it seems there's been a change of pace, and the game's actually running very well. Surprisingly, in 720p with the lowest settings, the GT610 can actually run a modern game that a lot of people play. In the top left corner of the screen, you can see the system statistics, and the GPU is pinned at 100% utilization. We're using like 99% of the VRAM, and the CPU and system memory are really underutilized. This game can run on just about everything. Throughout all this gunfighting and just general playtesting, there's been no stuttering, no dips in frame rate. Just let that sink in. We're running a modern game at 40-something FPS on a display adapter that came out 10 years ago. This is nothing short of a playable and good experience. Anyway, on to the next game. Doesn't that just look beautiful? Fortnite running in 720p with a 25% render resolution. Everything is currently set to the lowest settings, and this game cannot look any worse unless you do some modding to it. But hey, look on the bright side. When we're inside a building, we're getting 53, 46, 59 FPS, but as soon as we step outside, that's going to tank down to about 20 to 30 FPS. You know what? I might have been wrong, actually. While we're outside, we're still getting 64, 62 FPS, which on a display adapter that came out a decade ago, that's very impressive. Now, hang on a second. Do you see that, I don't know, whatever those pixels are over there? Would you be able to see if that's a player or not? Because I would not be able to. And I think for that reason, this game is still unplayable. What even is, oh, it's a bench and a brick. What? Now, if we're talking about frame rate alone, this card has more than enough performance to offer, especially with the overclock. Alongside the frame rate, I think I'm also noticing a little bit of input lag. And I don't know if this guy's a bot, but he sure is acting like one. Now, if that's not top-notch performance, I don't know what is. So is this this game playable 
Yeah, obviously. I mean, look at it. This is flawless. Well, I hoped this game would be running a little better than it is, but in a resolution of 800 by 600 with the lowest settings, here's GTA 5 on the GT 610. You know, honestly, I think I've seen mobile games that have looked better and ran better than this game right now. You know what I said earlier that the GT 610 was meant as a display adapter and not as an actual graphics card? Here is a prime example of that. And the thing is that GTA is a really well optimized game and we're only still pulling 27 FPS with the GT 610. That just goes to show you how crappy this card is and how out of its intended environment it is right now. So yeah, a bit of a disappointing test personally. Ah, oh, my car's on fire. Franklin, get out of here. Gonna okay, he died either way. Anyway, you know what else might die after this testing? The GT610. So let's see what else it can do before it find the croaks. So I have about 900 something hours in this game. I've played far too much of it. And I can honestly say this is the worst looking I've ever seen BeamNG drive. We are currently in 640 by 480p, which is the lowest natively supported resolution. We're also running the lowest settings. And even with all those sacrifices, we're only getting 12 to 14 FPS. And on top of all that, to make it even better, there is a horrendous amount of input lag. Listen, I have ran BeamNG on a lot of low-end computers, and I can honestly say this is by far the worst experience I've ever had with this game. You can see the trees loading in right in front of you. There's no anti-aliasing, so everything looks like a jaggedy mess. And honestly, if you were telling me this was a game from like 2004, I would believe you. We could get a little more performance out of it by turning on simplified physics, but that kind of it takes away from the whole point of the game. I mean, look at this. This looks like a Pokemon game. It looks like a mod for Half-Life 2. This is not BeamNG Drive. So, can you play BeamNG on the GT610? No, no, you can't. Even with a stupid amount of overclocking and all the sacrifices possible, it's not gonna run well. I mean, I guess you can drive around and smash into stuff and have your UI take up most of your screen, but don't do this. This is not a good idea. Conclusion, this card is kind of a piece of- In all seriousness, I did not expect the 610 to perform as well as it did. I mean, I probably could have pushed the overclocks a bit further with some more fine tuning, but I don't think it would have made any reasonable difference. The 610 wasn't a lot to begin with, and cranking up clock speeds until your computer flatlines every couple of minutes isn't really worth it. But I guess if you're going to stick to games like Valorant or League of Legends, it'll be enough for you. Just not the type of performance most are looking for. Anyways, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Consider leaving a like or subscribing because it genuinely helps me out. If you want to join the community, there's a link to the official Jane Knight Discord server in the description, alongside a few donation methods that directly support the channel. If you have any questions or related comments, then leave them below and I'll be sure to respond to it. That's about it. Have a great day. Bye.